This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hey, bitch. What is your whole deal? Hey, bitch. Just tell us how you feel. You wished for a sign from above. Well, here's a podcast about boy sex, fucking, dating, and love. Seek treatment. If you're boring as fun, seek treatment. If you're unlucky in love, seek treatment. If you just can't take With Kat and Pat. Hi. Hey. Oh, is- hi is something that's not for horses. Do not feed your horses. Hi. If, hi. If, you're, if your horse eats hi, call um, poison control immediately. <laughs> the song? Po- po- call poison control and they'll work closely together with animal control. Have I talked so intensely on this podcast about how I used to listen to the song Because I Got High Before Bed Every Night when I was in like the third grade? Oh, I forgot about that song. It was 104.1 KRBE, Houston's greatest pop hits. And they, for some reason, there was like, there was like a two month period where every night they'd play this like the same at exactly my bedtime. They'd be like, yeah, because I got high. I didn't know what it meant, but I was like, because I got high. Do you know what two sister songs I love and that don't get enough credit? What? Both by Tovalo. What? Talking bodies and the one's like, gotta stay high all the time. I'm not doing I this. I don't know that. Right. Who is Tovalo? Da, 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 is Tovalo da, da, da. the Swedish girl? She yeah, and then like actually, she, and by the way, maybe Tovalo. Actually, maybe Tovalo. Is it Tovalo? It's Tovlo. I know, but I think it's actually not because, like, she famously went on Drag Race as a judge, and Rue said her name in some strange way, and everyone was like, "Oh my god, he mispronounced her name!" And then she like came forward and uh-huh. was like, "That's how you say it." You know, what we just well, that's interesting. And what we just came back before we recording. Oh yeah, it's kind of resonating. And talking bodies, you got a perfect one, so put it on me. Wait, what's the lyric? And if we're talking bodies, yeah. You got, you got a perfect one, so put it on me. I'd be uh, in my next chapter, whatever. I'm gonna write pop songs for young stars. I need a next chapter. Um, <laughs> Wait, we just unpacked. My first word as a baby was "hi." Right. Yes. How beautiful is that? I'm, that is really. I would stand in my crib and I would go, "Hi, hi." That's that's very kind of like hi. appropriate. It's an, it's always appropriate to say hi. Hi. I just went to the gym. No one cool was there. No one cool was at the gym. I'm sorry. Well, I sometimes see someone. Well, sure. I take that out. No, leave we'll it keep in. It in. <laughs> what was your first word as a baby? Like my family, it doesn't have that culture where like they know your first word. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, well, I am hot off a healing session, right? And I'm hot off of a breathwork session, but not oh, as right. hot, warm, because I had it yesterday. Yes, yeah, so tell us about it. Well, you want to tell us about your healing? Yes. Well, I was connecting with a woman in New Zealand who is Polish. Wow. And it was, she goes. She only does two. First of all, this is this is incredible. She only does two hour sessions. What? You you can't find anything about her online. She insists on being paid in cash. And so she asked me this, okay. to mail her cash. Okay, so here's what happened. So I literally, I'm doing my show in New Zealand. I meet this gorgeous, gorgeous girl after the show. And she's like, I have someone, a healer for you. I was like, great. This girl's name is Bleep Redacted. So <laughs> she gives me the info. And then let's just say, let's make, make up a name um, Jemima Kirk. Okay, the Jemima Kirk. I meet Jemima Kirk after the show. And Jemima, <laughs> Jemima.Kirk. <laughs> And then today during the session, we have this two-hour session. I'm like, oh, so by the way, how do I, how do I, first, first of all, after the session, she's like, okay, so we need to do three of these this week before, before, before we lose the flow. Oh my she says, we need three more this <laughs> how week. How much does it cost, may I ask? She, it's 200 New Zealand dollars, which is like half as much here. Cool. So it's actually not that, it's actually cheaper than therapy for me. Do you get a, okay. So then she goes, um, you can contact Jemima Kirk about how to pay me. I was like, wait, but I actually don't know that girl. <laughs> she goes, she's like, I only take cash, so you're going to have to send it to her, and then she's going to bring me cash in an envelope. And I'm like, what? For, but I love when, so, when, when a healer doesn't insist on being paid, I'm like, okay, respect. Like, yeah, you actually are like doing you're something. you're here to work. And she laid her hands on me. You know, so, and this is, okay, there's this thing, to right up top, right up top, I tune in. Um, she goes, oh my God, there's so much yellow light around you. There's, she's like, I'm seeing a lot of yellow is light. Is that good or bad? Should I go to this person? Maybe. Can you connect me with the Jemima? Maybe. You play your cards, right? <laughs> so and what, then, do, you, do you Venmo Jemima? I haven't decided yet. I literally, I just got off Zoom with her two seconds ago. Uh-huh. So then she's like, all this yellow light around you. We're talking, talking, talking. She said, there's a woman who played the cello who is watching over me. Shout out to my cello girl. <laughs> Wait, did she, did she say if it's good or bad that you have yellow light? It's good. It's good. It's warm. Okay. It's love. I, I, she says, I, have, I have yellow light, I have purple light, and green light. But I hate to know the first thing she says is me. yellow light. And then I'll, I will find out. And then I'm laying, she's like, she begins to lay her hands on me virtually. And I go, oh my God, how funny. The sublet I'm staying in for the month. Wi Fi password? Yellow light. Are you serious? Full body chills. Look at me. Yellow roses, Micah, from our podcast. 
Wait, how was that for him? <laughs> because Micah from the podcast that you recommended um, always brought oh, Yellow Roses. Oh I know, okay. I know. You said, I was like, there's no <laughs> way he's talking about what I think he's talking about. I, I forgot you listened to that. I was like, wait, are you going to like my true crime? Yeah, shout out. Yeah, yeah, shout R. out. R.I.P., literally. <laughs> shout out to all my Double, everywhere. that's a double rip. Okay, anyway, so that was um, my session. It feels crazy to see her three more times this week, but for two hours each, but I think I'm going to do it. Um, wow, that's crazy. It's a steal. It's cheaper than my lymphatic drainage massage, which did nothing but give me a stomach bug, which I'm only now getting over. Wow. Los Angeles starter pack, get a stomach bug. I, um... Both ends, coming out both ends. <laughs> I had breathwork, it was good. The woman kept saying fuck during it. Because, <laughs> like, she was... Because, t- like, she took me back to my past, and, like... And she was like, and this fucking lady. Like, she kept saying... I was like, can you stop? You're like, I'm a Christian. I was like, can you say friggin'? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time I said friggin' in front of my mom in, like, the sixth grade, she freaked out. She really? Was, she, was, she, was, she freaked for friggin'? She was... Do you know what that's a substitute for? Oh my god, a substitute. <laughs> Do you know what that's a locale substitute for? <laughs> okay, so she said. No, you know what no one talks about anymore? What? Margarine. Oh, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Daughter's name though, put it on the list. Margarine Colin Regan. Yeah, margarine was like a huge part of the but culture. Taylor Swift's Marjorie, but margarine. Yeah. Did she become a billionaire? Is that what people are talking about? This will come out in months. I think she might have just become a billionaire. I, how is she not already? You know when you see things online and you're like, you kind of have to work backwards to be like, what is yeah, this yeah. in response deduce. to? Yeah. And you have to do to do I think it might be in response Zoo, to Taylor deducing. becoming a billion. But no, I, I don't think she, I would. I was actually surprised she got there already, to be honest. Really? Well, billion is so much. Right. Well, like I says, I'm just at the beginning of my career and I'm going to make people across the world laugh until they're crying. Oh my God. But she's problem right now is that I'm going home and crying afterwards. She's not wrong, love. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started, this will come out in so long, but I started The Traders last night. I cannot wait. So good, but it, I, I can sue. I know. Well, she's kind of a non factor so far. Who is major? I don't know the other cast. Um, Parvati is being major. Um, honestly, a lot of my people are being major. Mm. Um, Sandra, I will say this is only said with nothing but absolute love, reverence, and respect. I can't it's wait. like I, I already know. truly <laughs> high camp because Sandra from Survivor has. Um, full like adult braces and it's just like so unexpected because we've seen her play four survivor seasons she's never had them and then she shows up to the traders and I was texting with them <laughs> I was texting with Aaron Jackson about it and I was like it's such camp it's brilliant it's genius and he was like yeah you won you know two million dollars on survivor she won twice and and you can't um get invisible invisible line. Line, yeah and I was like yeah because the thing about the thing about the braces, and this is again, she looks amazing, and I think that she shouldn't change a and thing. And all bodies are beautiful. Are all, but they shoot. they do something about the braces. I'm I'm like, are these from the 1950s? Like they don't feel like even modern day braces. Can I see an image? I don't know. You know, I think I should wear braces for my next special, and it'll be like when Ali Wong um, disrupted the industry by being pregnant <laughs> yeah. during her special. I'm gonna be like, oh wait, did you see that adult with braces during her special? You know, I saw an image yeah. on Instagram.com Hit that was like, it. it was three women at one of their baby showers, but they all were pregnant. And like, you know, when women my post, first impulse, gross. <laughs> you know, when women are pregnant and they hold their stomach, as so though, you know. Well, it's kind of like it's not gonna fall off if you don't hold it. <laughs> I think it's more like they're they're showing you like I'm not just fat. Not that there's anything wrong with being fat. Being fat's beautiful. Yeah, it's like some, it's like as though they're holding their babies, but it's like guess what? It's attached. What if they're rehearsing for the big event? Yeah, but that would almost be like if you had like a baby Bjorn, but you still were holding it. So why did it get to be called that? Such a beautiful name. I don't know. Baby Bjorn, baby Bjorn, baby Bjorn, and baby is Bjorn. it spelled like Bjorn, the recording artist? No, that's Bjork. Oh right. <laughs> but there's Peter Bjorn. But, but, but I mean, is it spelled like that? <laughs> With a J. Yeah, it's BJ. No, Interesting. <laughs> I saw him at a CVS once in Hollywood. You slept with him at a CVS? I saw him. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't sleep. We didn't, we didn't <laughs> get in the sack. Oh, my God. It reminds me of, like, mm-hmm. this girl, Stacy from my high school, who um, she was, like, you know, sexually active. And lucky, lucky girl. She had this friend who, um, <laughs> we were, like, sophomores, but, like, I just remember she was sitting behind her in home room, and Stacy was telling her about this guy, and her friend was like, "Are you gonna sleep with him, Stacy?" <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it seems so quaint. Like, "Are you gonna sleep with him, Stacy?" Is just for one, Stacy as a name is such so, like a TV show yeah. character, and then "Are you gonna sleep with him, Stacy?" I'm like, I'm watching Friends right now. Yeah, I miss them. I wonder if Stacy slept with them. I'm in pajamas essentially because our guest is family that we're having after this. I cannot wait to see that girl. I know. I'm in I'm in jeans. Cool. 
I feel so light after my session, even though, you know, so basically, yeah, I've been puking since Friday night. Wow, puking. And bottom. Wow, <laughs> you've been bottoming. I've been bottoming all weekend. <laughs> there's, a, there's like a little, there's a little stool in the bathroom where I'm staying. Like a um, squatty party? Not quite, more of just like a, like, a, like a lovely lady would lay there, and would sit there and shave her legs on it. I see. But on the stool, I had like a roll of toilet paper and a mug of water. And Brian was like, okay, your office. <laughs> I was like setting up shop. I'm so um, in love right now. Oh, that's good. I know. Sometimes I forget how much I love him and then I am with him and I'm like, wait, you rock. I wonder if I ever will be in love. You definitely will be. Why not? Well, that not with that attitude. Yeah, I um. <laughs> Lika says, Lika says, don't do that. Um, but what was I going oh, to so, say? So Breathwork was saying fuck a lot. She was saying fuck a lot. I was. I will say I was nervous because when I famously tried to do EMDR, we like had to end our partnership. So wait, wait, wait. who did you do EMDR with? Um, same uh, woman, a different woman. No, a different woman okay. that was recommended to me by our. Oh, I see. Okay, so and like, um, you're worried that the two practices were connected. I wasn't worried that they were connected, but I didn't have a negative experience with the MDR. But my therapist, who did do MDR with me, who wears scrunchie every session, mm -hmm. she uh, we couldn't connect on like she didn't understand that I didn't understand what my core wound was. So she'd be like, "What? Well, she's like, okay, so to start out, what's your core wound?" And I was like, uh, "If yeah. I knew that, like, I wouldn't be here." And then she was like, "Okay, let me just read you a list of like potential core wounds." And then she like, got like a printout, too. and I was like. I don't know. And I was like, yeah, those, it was like, no one likes me. I'm not good enough. I'm not safe. Could it be I'm not safe? And yeah. I was like, yeah, it could be I'm not safe. And she's like, okay, let's keep reading. And I was like, well, okay, well, what? And then we couldn't even land on one. And then like, then she would just talk to me for the rest of the session. And so then I was like, let's just call it. Like, yeah. let's just call it. So I was kind of worried about breath work. So I was like, is she going to make me have to know what she's looking for? And even when we were starting, I was very nervous because I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to access it. I mean, to get somewhere. <sighs> but anyways. That's so good. Yeah, my, my EMDR goes... I didn't feel better after it, though. She, t she said my brain was doing healing work. I do think it's like... And maybe that's precious. why I'm so tired afterwards and feeling worse. I think it's the most draining thing in the world. Yeah, I'm doing it again on Thursday. Because it's like you spend most of your life trying to avoid these feelings you're having, and this is you being like surrendering to them forever. Yeah. For better for worse. For better for worse. I How worst. was your set at the show? I'm sorry I left. Um, I did the same 12 minutes I do all over town every night of my life. I have fun. I tried to like do a joke about breathwork, but it didn't it didn't quite land. Oh, no, I tried to do a joke about the urologist who told me I'd jerk oh, yeah, off too much. Oh, yeah, what did you say? Um, I don't know. I just like brought him up and was hoping a joke would come out. And mm -hmm. like when you were on, I was kind of thinking and I had funny stuff I was like thinking. But then once I got on stage, I couldn't remember it. It's not funny when you're like, I'll just say, I'll just say the word and see what happens. And like yeah. no one laughs and you're like. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Um, that place is um cute. Who are those people? The people in the audience. Who do you think? I don't know. They I don't know. They seem so earnestly like they were rocking, ready for a good. Yeah, they were yeah. like they were so just like out on the town for a good time. I know it was I'm, refreshing. Yeah, because I'm convinced no one in Los Angeles even leaves their house at night. Really? Do you think they do? I think they do. Interesting. First of all, I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying it here. It's been absolute bliss. That's so good. It's just like the sun is actually shining. Yeah. Although I do think it was the Erewhon keto muffins I bought that made me puke both ends. I know. Wait, you really can't hang out after this? I don't know. Okay. I just did not I'm so behind on everything. What are you behind on? Well, I need to... Sam sent me her latest pass the script. Yeah. And I've owed her my... Read and pass for like three weeks. Oh, you know who I saw on the street the other day? Hmm. Alana Wolpert. Oh my god! Her dog. Star of stage and screen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's killing it. Yeah, I mean, it was so funny. We had her on the pod, and now it's a multi-billion. Now her movie's a billionaire. <laughs> now, now she's Taylor. Now she is my Taylor. Um, that's fun. Yeah, and then I also um, obviously have a self tape that was due four days ago, and kind of just like want to be asleep. I ordered a rug. Oh, which one? <laughs> Um, checkered what brick, color? brick. Oh, love. Yeah, that's so nice. My that was your goal for the new year. That was my goal for the new year. It was my goal to say, <laughs> and like January. I've been like doing. You know, when you're like, doing your to do lists, and you're like, okay, like this is something. Yeah, but I'm not creating anything. Oh well, my whole life is inventing tasks that aren't real, aren't rewarding. <laughs> yeah. I am so good at planning shit, doing shit that gives me no nothing of substance. It's so well documented, but like. It's such a vibe when you do something and you realize you forgot to put it in your to-do list so you can't cross it off. Oh, uh, German of, word. Yeah, and you like write it down to cross it off. 
Mm-hmm. Do you do that? I wouldn't write it down to cross it off, but I would be like, oh. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, I could do this thing right now, but I'm like, I haven't written it down yet. I'm like, let me go write it down and then I'll do it. So Where is your to-do list? Um, I have this little notebook. So it's uh, I usually what's the opposite of virtual analog? Yeah, I do an analog thing where I um, it's actually kind of cute. I might get back into bullet journaling for journaling because I brought you a lot of joy. It's loosely inspired by bullet journal in that like on one side of the page I'll do a week like I'll write down what week it is and I'll write down all the tasks I should do that week and then next to it I'll do like dailies like each day and I'll pull from the weekly to get to my dailies and then I'll do a box on the side of the dailies where I say appointments I have that day. That sounds really good. You sound like a TikTok girl. I am a TikTok girl at heart in some ways. Do you think I should be wearing product or not wearing product? Strong opinions loosely held. <laughs> um, that's what we What's should, that from again? That's, I don't know. That's what we need to have. Yeah. Everyone. Strong opinion. Everyone. That's what we need to have. Strong opinions loosely held. That's from something. Yeah. Let's find out. Hack, can, we, can we hack the mainframe over there? Um, wait. Should you use product? I actually, I thought your hair looks really good today. Well, today it's not wearing product. Hey, it's not wearing product. Oh, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I keep thinking about the offhand joke you made. That's why it made me laugh so hard. We're all going in for the group picture backstage oh, yeah. at the show, The Allegion, and Pat's wearing his new jacket. And he goes, are we leaving our Patagonia jackets on or off? <laughs> <laughs> taking them off. I didn't even think that was that funny. I don't know why. Some, you know something just tickles you. And the you thing think, about, oh, yeah. You just think that person's so, so funny. The thing about Traders is that it dropped three episodes, and now I'm like on the second half of the third one. So it's like. In going home after this, I'll, I will be staring at the abyss. Mm-hmm. I, I had the option of seeing a movie with friends. I, I chose not to What were they that. seeing? Well, <sighs> Boy and the Heron. Heron. What's that? I don't know, but I got anxiety about how boring it sounded. Yeah, it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds young adult. It sounds like. No, I think it's like, it's, I think it's like a famous director, but I think it's animated. It's like someone who's like oh, literally famous oh, and like. Yeah. But. I'm stupid, by the way. Yeah. And I, um. But I'm sorry, so I'll go burped. home. I'll be staring to the abyss. It's almost like I don't even want to watch the second half of the third episode because there's going to be nothing after that. But yeah. What should I watch? Scripted. Well, scripted. Have you seen all the big ones? No. Like, have you watched Sopranos? Yes. Have you watched Six Feet Under? No. Pat, I, I just know. got. I just got so excited for you. Oh, good. Okay. Oh my God, Pat. <laughs> It not only is the best show of all time, there's gay in it. I know. I mean, I've actually watched the pilot. It is the best show of all time. I am so attracted to that guy, Dexter. Michael C. Yeah. Paul. Yeah. It's the best show Six ever. Feet, Six Feet Under, starring Dexter. Starring Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> Every performance in that show is beyond. My uh, first New York roommate was obviously my cousin's friend, and she classic. loved watching Dexter at night, and she loved, um, and I would watch it with her. And she loved the opening credits, and you were never allowed to skip them. What what happens in them? It's like symbolic, I guess, because it's him making breakfast and like starting his day, but he's doing it kind of violently. Oh, I've or never seen that. There's show. like an insinuation of almost violence in the way he cuts his eggs or whatever. Yeah, that's cool. I guess I you don't think was, you thought it was kind of obvious. Well, I think after the 19th time watching it, I was like, <laughs> let's go ahead and skip the credits, like. Did you ever watch the Sharon Horgan show about the Irish sisters? Bad sisters. Yeah. I watched a lot of it and I, I really liked it. it, but I couldn't. I will say there was, I loved it so much. There was something about it that wasn't quite like propulsive enough. Oh, like I was so sad when it ended. Just so many foiled attempts that I was like, okay. But I love her. She is. Uh, I actually love her. I'm so embarrassed that I I'm met her and her. said nothing interesting. When did you meet her? 2019 when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> I went to her office and she was like, it's like to like, have, to, like have an idea. And then she was like, did you have any ideas? And I was like, I just love to, like, do something. Yeah. So it's fucking stupid. <clears throat> oh, my God. Uh, She's a classic person that you're up to. You're like, we can get you to meet her. Yeah, and then you do, and you have nothing to say, and you're boring. <clears throat> yeah. You're stupid. Oh, no, sorry. I'm not allowed to say that anymore. I'm uh-huh. awesome, uh-huh. and every time I go to the bathroom, I'm supposed to high-five myself. Um, really? Are you okay? Every time you go to the bathroom, you're supposed to high-five yourself. In the mirror. Are you okay? Yeah, why, why? Are you choking on something? No. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> just like a normal clearing of the throat. Totally. Um... I'm in a bad mood for sure. It's okay. Should we take a letter? Yeah, let's do a letter for help. Hi, Kat and Pat. I'm a 23-year-old twink that recently hooked up with a 41-year-old via grinder. Normal. He was into more of that daddy and boy dynamic. Give him my number, even though I'm <laughs> his exact same age, um, which was new to me. But ultimately, I ended up finding it very hot. Yeah. Yeah, join the fucking club. <laughs> like, potentially the best sex I've ever had to date. Sure. 
since then, I've been trying to determine if mm-hmm. I have some weird psychosexual thing about my father. My dad and I have perfect have a perfectly fine relationship, and I don't have self-proclaimed daddy issues. But I feel like we as a culture often associate the sexual dynamic with a traumatic father-child relationship. For example, after leaving the hookups apartment, I immediately started wondering what happened in his childhood that made him want to sit me to sit in his lap. Is this just residual Freud bullshit in the culture, or do I need to worry about this? <laughs> Happy to answer any follow-up questions if necessary. <laughs> okay. um, uh, first of all, I'm obsessed with saying, do I need to worry about this? I, like, <laughs> huh? Do you, um, I don't think you need to impulse? worry. About, I don't think you need to worry about it. I think it's so common. I don't know why it is. I don't think it is. To quote Erica Jane, one time Erica Jane said, "I think it would be all too easy to say I had daddy issues." Oh, yeah, but I'm kind of like, well, it's easy because it's true about you. <laughs> <laughs> because she has like an absent father and then married like an 89 year old, and she was like, "I think it would be all too easy." Um, no, it sounds like you don't have daddy issues. I just think. Some things are hot. I think um, I think sometimes more so than your own personal. Um, okay, more so than your own personal relationship with your father. I think society conditioned you to view masculinity as a certain way, and I mm. think an older man oftentimes fits that vibe more than a younger man. So that's why you're kind of drawn to it. And then I don't know why older guys like younger guys. Actually, I'm not attracted to anyone even a day younger than me. Older guys, like, yeah, I feel like sometimes. <laughs> I was talking to my, I don't know why I keep bringing him up on this podcast. I was talking yeah. about my sponsor, to my sponsor. Uh-huh. I was talking about a crush who I have that I have on a person that's older than me. And I was like, I don't even know if he's into younger. And he was like, everyone's into younger. And I was like, I don't think that's true. Well, For everyone instance, in society me, is yeah. into younger. Yeah. If you're like casting your next project, but if you're yeah. casting your next sexual experience, I guess, I don't know. I think maybe we have to get a little older to think that younger's hot. Because right now younger yeah. seems like. I mean, I'm pretty old. You're not old. I'm 35 plus. I could be president. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> is that true? It's true and right. And you should be. 35 years is the age. Someone in my grade could be president. <laughs> At any given moment, at any point, someone in my grade could become president. That's so good. Stacy could be president. Stacy, after sleeping with him. him. <laughs> um, and yeah, and the him from the him in question. Yeah. Um, this is also like an important part of it. The him because Stacy was the hostess at a pizza restaurant, and the him was a chef at the pizza restaurant. This is giving like Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Are you going to sleep Ta- with him, what was it? Is it Tanya, the girl who you like? Tyra. Liked? Tyra. I love Tyra. Yeah, that show is so good. Yeah. I'm so horny for that guy. I'm pretty Coach. horny for him. Oh, you're. Oh, oh. I was thinking you meant Riggins. Well, of course. <laughs> now who's into Younger? Uh, <laughs> how old's Riggins? Well, in the in show, show, he's but, a high schooler. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he is the hottest fucking thing on the planet. Yeah. Um. Why didn't he launch you know what brian always talks about like people they tried to make happen like they really tried to make him happen but did they try to make they didn't really none of the talented young cast of that show launched. what about mr kristen dunst mr Chris- mr kirsten dunst oh i know i don't believe in him i love his work I do, jesse plemons uh, jesse plemons i don't believe in he's good in everything he was only good in love and sex but they would never no, let love and, a love woman and death, love and death and no, uh, what? love and death is Elizabeth Olsen in Love and Death. So good. Literally did the damn thing. I know. It's that show is so good. No one talks about it. I know. Um, I don't think this person I don't think this person needs to worry. No, they definitely don't need to worry. I, I think, think it's so common. Especially when you're 23, you're like experiencing new things and you probably it's also probably very novel. Like as a 23 year old, you've never hooked up with a 41 year old. So you're like, oh wow. Yeah, and maybe it's like also I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's all it's less like father son and more like um like being taken care of. It's like sexual to be like, oh my God, I can just relax and be like taken care of. But isn't it interesting that so much gay porn, and maybe this is true of straight, is based in stepdad, stepson dynamic. So much straight porn to his family stuff. It's so weird. It's so insane. Yeah. One time a friend of mine was like, <laughs> I've heard it bleep, redact the name. Yeah. Was like, she was drunk. She's like, 
obviously you want to fuck your brothers. I was like, no, I don't. She's like, if I had one, I'm sure I'd want to fuck him. I was like, no, I really, really don't. She's like, everyone does. I'm like, you don't have brothers. You don't understand. It's not like that. She's like, you do. <laughs> um, um, what did I jerk off to last night? Yeah, I, I don't. I can't. Oh, interesting. I watched porn last night. What was it? I'm getting so lazy in my old age. I only use my vibe. I used to only do hand. Really? Now I'm always reaching for that little girl. It's well, now blue I'm so girl paranoid big. that like I'm like. Coming too much? And it's making me pee too much. I would just enjoy the coming. It's like the one yeah, thing we have. I know. Literally. <laughs> it's not. You have a lot. <laughs> you need to focus on all the good things I you know. have. I and just, of course, I'm saying it to myself too. <laughs> I had a the kind of protein bar that, that is tastes so good but Ooh. makes you feel like such shit after. What's it called? It's I'm almost embarrassed to say the name because it's like not a common protein bar mm-hmm. and you kind of can't find it anywhere except for the vending machine at my gym. Okay. And it's called MRE bars. MRE. What does that stand for? I don't know. Muscle? But my, I think meal is ready to eat which is like oh. well that's based on like military. Oh. That's what it's ba- base uh, comes from. Based on. Yeah. It's based on military. Like, that's what they eat is, like, they have these MREs. And I know that. I can't believe the military is real. I know. Like, <laughs> isn't it crazy? It's like, okay. I know. We live in hell. My little cousin is in the military. Really? Yeah. And he was. What, what pocket of it? There's so many little. I think Maine. Fight. Yeah. Maine is fighting. Maine is fighting. Well, then Navy is boat. Navy swimming. And maybe said fighting, swimming, <laughs> flying. Pilot. Yeah. And then there's office and there's hospital. And then there's, yes, yeah, yeah. And then there's like. Um, maps. Yeah, yeah, there's maps and there's like being in, there's like computers. And then there's like putting a chess piece on a map. Yeah. And then there's like um, going to schools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love in Game of Thrones when they'd always have like this huge map and they'd be like, and what if we did this and uh, it's like okay I wish I, I wish I remembered any of Game of Thrones it's the best ever. I also get why you love the podcast that we listen to that we were talking oh, about hi. because all the evil people in it like in in, in the middle of the, like <laughs> nefarious conversations about killing people they'll like talk about how like where they are in Game of Thrones <laughs> It's so niche. It's like if you just watch Game of Thrones this year, you'll really like this true crime podcast. I think that narrator has narcissistic personality disorder. Oh, Olivia, La- Olivia Lanice, <laughs> Olivia Lavoie. Yeah, but I didn't want to say because what if she listens? Well, then let's get her on here and she can tell us if she has it or not. Yeah. I'm obsessed with her. She's so funny. Um, and like intentionally. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like she'll include. Imagine things. your name. No, shout out by the way. We love your work, Olivia Lavoie. Yeah. What's what's this? What is that? <laughs> this is my impression of being on The Voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. What would it be like to be a judge on The Voice? The greatest rush? <laughs> the greatest rush of all. I feel Is judging that. on The Voice. Um, I feel like I'm Did you s- finish that pod? Um, I'm on like 15, episode 15 or 16 or maybe 14, but it's like, I can't figure it out. And is there anything? What do you are think there any happened? new twists or turns to come? I think like, I literally think what Queen is saying is what happened. You believe Queen? I I texted you. I was like, I texted you, not me believing Queen's testimony. I didn't see that, girl. I texted that you. That was been a while ago. It was three days ago at most. I don't believe a single word Queen <laughs> says. <laughs> Bailey dumb. B- Bailey dropped Bailey a dumbbell not, on Bailey Micah's not, head. Bailey <laughs> dumped a, dropped a dumbbell Bailey on Micah's head. Bailey could not lift a dumbbell. I had a, oh my God. Bailey you know was a beautiful small girl. You know, when you had vision, oh, something put me in a good, <laughs> I'm so <laughs> laughing that this now qualifies as a good mood. <laughs> Wait, this is such a real thought I had that I was like, oh cool. Like, <laughs> I was at the gym today and I was putting away my weights and there uh-huh. was a girl stretching on the floor and I had a vision of me accidentally dropping my dumbbell on her head and crushing her and I'm feeling so bad. And I was like, that'd be such a nightmare situation. Yeah, and then I remember, th- and then I was like, "Well, at least that didn't happen." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, cool, I'm in a good mood because I didn't right. <laughs> because I didn't drop a dumbbell on this woman's you head." You can always access that feeling, yeah. If you, you need well, that. unless I do drop one on <laughs> someone's head, in which, unless, unless I pull a Bailey. In that case, I can't. <laughs> you know, I went to the Equinox in Culver City. Um, per Johnny's recommendation, did I tell you about? My date in Culver City ever? No. Oh, my God. Hellish. You know, Culver City is home to a delicious warm salad I've been getting since 2018. Really? What's it, What is the place called? Ask Amy. 
Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Let me get on the phone. <laughs> if you CK me. <laughs> if you CK me about the warm salad. Um, it's called like warm. I went on this date with this guy who was like <laughs> insistent on showing me Culver City. He was like, I'm really excited to show you Culver City. And I was like. What's wrong with people? I was like, I guess. So I get there. Isn't that one of the least beautiful places of this whole town? Yeah, he thought it it's was like a parking lot. He thought it was amazing, but he didn't like. I was like, "What are you trying to show me?" He would mm-hmm. like point. He'd be like, "Those lights light up at night." It was like a normal light. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one would hope." Cool. And then it took, and then like he drove me from his apartment to the restaurant. So then I was trapped at the restaurant. Like I couldn't leave the now restaurant. I the restaurant. It was so tall. What kind of restaurant? That was the other thing. We're walking around Culver City. He's like, so what are you in the mood for? Oh, no. I was like, you're cultivating this Culver City. You're Mr. Culver. I was like, you think I know what, what kind of cuisine Culver City offers? I told you guys about my, my new drag name. What? Samila ETA. Samila. Oh, that's funny. Thank you. <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> I kept saying it so Okay, like, how about my new okay. name? Somali A. Like <laughs> the, my last initial is A. I'm Somali A. Oh, so like Somali A? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Somali A and Samila ETA. <laughs> <laughs> Somali and Samila. Oh, that's really good. It's really fun to. Oh my I, God. I, I, my problem with dating you, is. They, you not dropping a dumbbell on someone's head is, yeah. is a good mood. <laughs> That's literally like what counts for a good mood for me. Do you know what I can't stand about dating? Go on. I feel fury when someone's being annoying on a date. Like, <laughs> I actually am not an angry not person. Me. I actually rarely feel angry. I'm angry constantly. When someone's being annoying on a date, I'm incensed. I'm like, can you please? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> why are you doing... Well, what know, does someone what's do? screaming in my head is, why are you doing this to me? They'll just be like telling a long story. Oh, my uh, goodness. And in my head, I'm screaming, why are you doing this to me? Who were we with that was like... <laughs> telling a long story? Was it on the podcast? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, God. Um, oh, oh, this is, some, this is something else. There's someone I know who's always like, I have this amazing story about blank. And then you have to be like... Okay, so do you want to tell it? Oh, that's so annoying. And then they go on for a really long time. It sucks. I'm getting mad. Can what does someone do that was annoying to you on your date? They just talked a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if they were interesting, it wouldn't be as bad. Yeah, or funny. Well, it's hard when you're the funniest person. Well, I have enjoyed other funny people. They're they're out there. They're hard to find. Yeah. Wow, that felt really erotic how I just touched this. Okay. Yeah. Did I tell you my massage that was erotic, though not sexual? Yeah, I hate to say you've told me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an amazing story about a massage that was erotic but not sexual. Oh, oh. go ahead. <laughs> I'm still... Oh, I, this is fun. I went to dinner and I saw the hot guy from Ted... No, sorry. There's a lot of hot guys in Ted Lasso. Of course. The one, the like... Brett. Not not Brett, who I'm addicted to. Um, I don't know that this actor's name, but he plays Jamie Tot. Jamie Tot. I, I don't know who anyone is on the oh, show. Oh, really? You guys know that one? He's so fucking I've hot. I've never seen a, seen a frame he of it. He was having dinner with definitely like a girlfriend type. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Dunster. Phil That's Dunster. A That's a tough one for a hottie. Mr. Dumpster, but he was <laughs> looking he was looking at her sexy as fuck. <laughs> I'm like wanting the rest of my fucking protein bar that makes me feel like trash. MRE. Yeah. It reminds me of um Oh, I left it in my car. MRE, what does that remind me of? Well, MRI. Guess what I'm already dreading. Guess what I'm already dreading. What? Pulling out of this parking lot. <laughs> Well, that's everything. Everything in LA is like, well, then I'd have to find a way to park and a way to get out. I know. That's why Pulling out is scary. That's why Uber did the show. The the pull-out method. The pull-out method is the method. (laughs) Pull-out method is scary. Oh, on my way pulling in here, I got honked at by 47 cars. Are you serious? I was like, I've honestly never done these two things. Honked at someone Mm -hmm. or shouted at someone. I've never shouted at someone. Interesting. I don't think I ever would. It's so beautiful that you're not angry. I'm so angry. I think my anger is turned inward. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get angry at myself too, but it like it like like all like sometimes I like I say this with love, and I am unwell and I'm getting help. Cool. I'll like, like hit myself. Oh, you do hit yourself. Not a while, but it's like in the past I've turned in hurt myself. Yeah. Trigger. Trigger warning. <laughs> not um not to bring down the mood. Of course not. Do you like these um joggers? I just bought them. Are they Viore? Yes. 
My best. dad's obsessed with Viore. I know. And your dad also told me about Roan. He's obsessed with Roan. And the one time we walked into Roan, there was a guy. Expensive stuff, though. Okay. He was the, you have to choose one piece that you're really excited about, I think. He everyone. loves the pants. Yeah. So we walk in and there's a guy who works there because he's like, comes with my dad and he's like, he's wearing head to toe Roan, like casual basics. Yeah. And he's like, hey, can I help you? And my dad's like, yeah, sorry. Do you work here? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, like, <laughs> it was so, yeah, it was I so think, crazy. I think for a Rowan, I would have to go to um, a brick and mortar location. Do you know what location um, really depresses me? Hmm. Century City Mall. Have I been there? Is there a Target? No, it's like it's it's like high end kind oh, of, but it also it's good. it's just like so depressing to me. Really, I feel so safe in a mall. Well, it's like you can't even say you're in it because it's completely outside. Oh, that's not a mall then, is it? No, but here it is a mall. I would call that more of a shopping center. I know, but here it's a sure. mall. You have to see it because it is a mall. <laughs> <laughs> like it's multiple stories, but they're all outside. Yeah. That's where the person at Suit Supply told me that um, that he's never met someone named Pat before. <laughs> and that it was a really weird name. <laughs> he said... Pat, that's a weird name. And I said, is it? And he said, oh, I just feel like I don't really meet a lot of Pats. And I said, I feel like I meet a lot of Pats. And he said, yeah, maybe 80-year-old grandmas. <laughs> Red to Phil. <laughs> and his name was friggin' Wait till Justin. Wait till A gets her hands on him. <laughs> well, in, high, in middle school and high school, I used to shop in the Rice Village, which was an outdoor mall. Rice Village. Rice oh, Village. I had a lovely run around Rice Campus. They had a girl named Grace that was running very well a couple years ago. And I'm not sure what happened to her last season. Aww. Maybe look into that. Let's get her on the pod. Your dad teaches at Rice, by the way. <laughs> I know. I always forget. My dad teaches at Rice, by the way. Entrepreneurship. Yeah, you can. It's so nice to run around that campus. Yeah, even though it's hot as. Hot I was imagining hell. that girl Grace, whose last name is escaping me. Um, She'd definitely be bouncing around there, doing tempos and stuff around that. What's I mean, tempo? Tempo is generally like well, it's a vague term, but it can mean a lot of things. But if I was to say a textbook definition of tempo, I would mm -hmm. say it's a, a around a, a twenty minute effort. Um, at a pace where your body's producing lactic acid at the same rate that it's clearing it out. And generally, that's about equivalent to a pace you could hold for an hour in a race setting. Now, a pace I can hold for an hour would be a uh, city. <laughs> You're doing a tempo right now. I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a tempo right now. Um, 20 minutes like this. But people play around with tempo. Sometimes people do like a 10-mile tempo at like marathon pace. Sometimes people do... My cousin ran a half marathon. And how'd it go? Apparently really well. My was it, oh, me. Houston was this morning, wasn't it? I suppose. And what would you say if I told you a new woman's American record was set in the half marathon? Marathon this I'd, morning in Houston. I would say that's so wonderful. Whiny Kaladi. Sure. Whiny Kaladi said it. And isn't it interesting? Congratulations to her. That the women's American record has changed hands like four times in the last three years while the men's is like 15 years old. Who is the men's? That's, I, I believe it's Ryan Hall from back in like 2008. Who's Ryan Hall? Who's Ryan Hall? <laughs> Ryan Hall was part of the, the big The smile you just, it was so cute. You were like, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Hall was part of the big three from 2000. What's the big three? The, <laughs> the big three was a historically good oh, high school class of... Um, from where? Well, there was Alan Webb, who was from Virginia, Ryan Hall, who was from um, Big Bear, California, and Dothan Ritzenhain, who was from um, Michigan. And they were all historically good, and they were all seniors the same year. And so national championships that year it was really viewed as a clash of the big three and oh, wow. Dothan won oh Alan got God. second and Ryan Hall what, well, what are you looking at it's a really sexy picture right. is it current day Ryan jacked okay look at now google Ryan Hall Boston Marathon and look at the difference okay because now Ryan has stopped Ryan was a miler in high school and college and then he ended up in like 2007 oh my God. trying the half marathon and doing really well and I've been setting the American record I believe this person and then he transitioned that's the same person looks a bit unwell in this photo well, he was running very well at that time. And um, anyways. He looks like. Um, but do you want to hear this bit of trivia? Yeah, of course. The, in 2000 <clears throat> Foot Locker National Championships, the big three took one through three. Guess who was fourth place? Oh. Charlie Million, who went to my high school. That's sick. Yeah, it was a cool trivia fact. Ryan Hall looks yummy now. Yeah. And Sarah Hall, his wife, is not running very well on her forward. She just turned 40. She is or isn't? She is. Like. They're they all were, Ryan Hall. They, they have a website. They always, they're very Christian. Oh. Yeah. 
And That's tough in it, at, at first, they were like the big Christians of the big three. Because Sarah, in 2000, <sighs> Sarah won for Locker. So she's kind of connected to the big three intrinsically because she won that year. But what I'll say about Sarah Hall is that, and Ryan Hall is like, of Ryan Hall, Alan Webb, and Dothan Ritzenheim, and like Dothan always seemed the coolest and the most kind of secular. And then like um, Ryan Hall was always like really Christian and Alan Webb I didn't know about. But now Alan Webb and his wife, Julia Webb, are literally the most Christian and they're like... Very, this is freaky. I'm very sorry. Very anti choice. They're very anti choice. As someone who knows a lot of Christians, it's just not what's up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. And I love God. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll, my Uber Runners driver. Runners have this way of looking like. My Uber so... driver in, my Uber driver in Denver was convinced that what I'm missing in my life is Jesus. She was sure of it. Yeah, but what does Jesus mean to you? I don't know. <laughs> she was positive that if I could find Jesus. It would be okay. Well, you can and, find, and lion's you can find Jesus. She told me about Jesus and lion's mane. <laughs> so I, I went with the lion's mane route, but it obviously is doing nothing. Well, the thing about Jesus is you could accept is you could accept him into your heart right now if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> we do a baptism. He's knocking on the door. He literally is. That's uh, what yeah. they say. They say yeah. it's, And I used to cry and be like, how do I know if he's in my heart? And they were like, he is. And I'd be like, okay, but I feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, should we do one more letter for help them wrap yeah. it up? What's the German word for every time? Like, you know, when like... People post like these are your zodiacs. These are the zodiacs, or like these are the like, um, what's it called? Astrology. No, like what's it called when it's your horoscope? Horoscope, and like because like they they can't have enough for all the slides, they s- split it up into two. Yeah. Scorpio is never on the first one I see, and I'm always having to then click and go to whatever. Same. So annoying. I know exactly what you mean. But like, hey, at least we didn't jump it up well on someone's head today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll read this one. Okay. This is from um, GGH. Hey, Kat and Pat, hope you're well. We're not. Um, I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 22. My age is not relevant to the story, but I thought I'd goop you. Okay, slay. <laughs> and I started talking to this girl I met on Hinge a couple weeks ago. Once we started texting, we talked all day, and I definitely developed a serious case of FOT, feelings over text. Love that acronym. Interesting. I'm not living in NYC full time, but I'm here for the month of January, and I'm starting a job here in June. However, somehow, none of this ever came up during my conversations with this girl. Anyway, we went on a date, and right at the beginning, she asked me where I lived, and I told her the sitch. But the energy immediately changed, and the date ended up being super weird. The next day, she texted me saying she was actually looking for something more serious and that she was taken by surprise finding out I'm not here full time. The funny thing is that I actually liked her so much in my head, so much that in my head we were going to be in a beautiful long-distance relationship until I was back in a couple months. So I sent her this super long text apologizing, saying I didn't want to mislead her. And then I might sound crazy, but I actually felt like what we have could develop into something. She hasn't responded. I feel pretty silly and also guilty. Is there anything else I can do to save this or is it unfortunately over? I think you have to... out of breath. I know. I think she has to put it out of mind for now. Go do the damn thing for two months or however long and then come back and be like, hey, I'm back for FT now. But this girl is being weird about it. I think it's it's weird that she would react that way. Yeah, it is weird. Also, like January to June isn't that long. Yeah. It feels so long. Well, even if she was upset, I think she still should have. She still owes you a response to your text. Yeah, I think respond to people's texts. So maybe she's not the one. Not the one. But I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I still think you. I still, if I were you, would still follow up in June and be like, "Hey, I'm here. Do you want to get together?" Yeah, and see what the vibe is, and be like, "Hey, I have a question. Were you going through something back in January? Because I couldn't help but notice you were. See you next Tuesday." Yeah, (laughs) you can draft a text right now saying, "Why were you weird in January?" Yeah. Um. Hope that helps. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Gigi, for caring. And are you hot today? Um, I actually don't feel hot today, interestingly okay. enough. You know, I felt hot yesterday, but a classic thing happened. A stranger posted a picture of me from sure. the show, love, and didn't look quite good, did I? Did you, love? Why did they do that? How could I? Because I did, like, feel hot yesterday. But, like, these people find these angles to capture you from, and they post it. People don't know things. I did look good yesterday, didn't I? You always look good. How could they have done that to me? Personal vendetta. Yeah. <laughs> I see, actually feel hot oh, even though I don't, like, sorry, I feel you. hot, but I don't look hot, but I don't care because my hair's you dirty. You do look hot. Okay. My hair's dirty. Um, my crush of the week is my new healer, Alika. Oh God, I forgot about crush of the week. Oh my God. Whatever are you going to do? My, honestly, like. The girl who didn't get hit with the barbell. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, like everyone at the gym was the worst energy today. I'm sorry. And it was my least favorite teacher. He, like, believes too much in, like, a, 
he believes too much in like fantasy. Like he's very kind of like granola. I love describing someone as granola. I know it's so nice. But he wears like um he wears like a fleece, a big oversized fleece, and he has long hair and like is granola. And How did he, that take off granola? I don't know. It's because like people who like hiked in Portland like right. would eat granola. And now think of how big granola is. I eat it every day, but I am not granola. No. I am not gran I am not what I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were saying. And so he really believes in like mind muscle connection, but to a point of like insanity where he like he'll make you do a million worlds where you're like pretending to lift weights. That sounds good. I'm like, this is a huge waste of time. Sorry which is, which by the way is money. But um, so long story short, my, my question, <laughs> my question of the week is the brand Kit Kats. So <laughs> good. You know, I did this sad, this is a like um, baby shoes never worn saddest story ever told. Yeah. I, I was on my way out to stage last night and like on like one of the sh like scaffolding shelves in backstage at the Elysian, there was like a Kit Kat wrapper that was like uh -huh. kind of 3D. I was open, but like oh, 3D and I, I literally felt it to see if there was any. As though I'm going to like. You just, the voiced it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to see if there was any scraps for a girl like me. <laughs> That's stuff I would never eat scraps. When I went to. um. When I did, uh, I want to be honest about the fact that I did a stand-up show on Friday at on um, the front patio of a boba space. Mm -hmm. And my cousin was in town and she came and she ordered a boba and they like just put a Kit Kat on top of the boba. Like, I guess as like some kind of um, flourish. Sure. And I had it. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Um, and that's our episode. Oh, that's my question because Kit Kat, yeah. Oh, great. Are you mad at me? No, are you mad at me? Not even for a second. Okay. A uh, head's gum. If you're boring as fuck, seek treatment. If you're unlucky in love, seek treatment. If you just can't take a hit, we'll seek treatment. With Kat and Pat. That was a head gum podcast.